play another act in the boudoir. Murder. I hope the ladies can calmly retire after so much excitement. If not, kindly communicate with your favorite radio announcer, Al Pine. And now, folks, to warm you up, we're going to let the three McCarthy girls do their red hot tap dance number for you. All ready, girls? We're ready, Mr. Pine. All right, let's go. radio announcer you are. I have simply fallen in love with your voice. My husband will be out of town next week. If you care to come, uh-oh, I think I'll file this one. No, you don't. So you know you're supposed to marry me. But I haven't accepted you yet, have I? But your application has been received and contents usually noted. Well, you better send your order through, Romeo, for I don't take no for an answer. No? Yes. Yes. No. No. And don't forget, my mama was Spanish. That's out of the family. I can't marry you. My father always warned me about Spanish women, so I can't marry you. Da -da, but da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. No, I can't marry you. As a matter of fact, I don't like chili for breakfast. But Al, I will but not Al, marry I'll you. Know. What? If you don't marry me, I might kill myself. Wait a minute, don't do it here. We haven't got room on the program for it. What in the world is Brenda's son? Late again, as usual. Hey, Al, let me announce Brenda tonight. You promised to let me announce sometime. Maybe as a secretary, you're okay, but a radio announcer, not so hot. Oh, here comes Brenda now with that big, stiff hamper. Wait a minute, not so loud. Don't forget the big, stiff owns this joint, you know. Hello, Al. Hello, Brenda. Mr. Hampton, you mean? You're late again, young lady. I know, but it's all your fault. Correct as usual. Your privilege being the owner of our radio station. <laughs> Come on here, you're on. I'll see you later. I've got to get out of the joke. All yeah, right, George. Right Hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. Heard the McCarty girls do their tap number on the contented cow's milk chocolate hour. Weren't they great? Oh, if you could only view them with the naked eye as I do. Oh, it's even more beautiful than I thought it was. Just the same, they'll be on next week at the same time. Now we're going to have the real treat of the evening. Miss Brenda LaSalle is going to croon that insinuating little melody, one sweet song, and how she will croon it. This is Station XIX, Al Pine announcing. Aren't you glad you're alive, folks? You bet you are. Keep your ears open. Don't go away, folks. All righty, let's go. Yeah. 
Gee, I'm sorry it's over. I could listen to her sing all night. Oh, I don't think she's so much. She's great. Well, you may change your mind about it when you get to New York. And she refuses to accept that song we've written for her. She can't refuse. I wrote it for her. I wouldn't let anyone else sing it. Then maybe it will never be sung. Oh, yes, it will. She didn't reply to that letter you wrote her. Well, she's probably pretty busy. You know, those big artists usually are. That's why I'm going to see her in person. Oh, Harry, I think it's awfully silly. You're making a good living right here in Bell's Falls, giving piano lessons. I want to make more than a good living. I want to make a big name for myself, writing songs. If I can get her to sing my number, I'll be made overnight. Don't be too sure. I am sure. That's why I'm going to New York. Believe me, well, I don't think you care for me. Of course I do, Mary. Why, you're the only girl I ever thought of. I'm doing this for both of us. Now I'm going to give you a big kiss. You're a sweet girl, Mary. I understand you've had an offer for talking pictures. Going to take it? Oh, no. Ward doesn't want me to go to Hollywood. No, you see, we're going to be married in a couple of weeks. No, I didn't know that. Am I invited? Certainly. Providing, of course, that I accept him. That's great. I always wanted to go to a society wedding. I'll tell you what. I'll announce the guests. But my dear fellow, one doesn't announce guests at church weddings. I didn't know that. But I was always married at City Hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss LaSalle. Mark Rashman is on the phone and says he has a swell new song written specially for you. Oh, dear, these songwriters tell him I have all the songs I can use. Wait a minute, Brenda. You better talk to him. He's one of the biggest composers in New York, you know. But I have all the songs I can use, even some famous composers. Have you called me about 10 days? Sure. I'll tell him. <laughs> come on, darling. I've got a table reserved for us at Toledo. Want to come along, Al? I'd love to. But I've got to stay here and say good night to the customers. Good night. Good night, Al. Hope you have a good time. Good night, Al. Have a good, good, night, good, good night, time. Sorry you won't come along. I'd like to, but I'm busy. Good night. 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 Oh, don't forget your song, Harry. Oh, I'm glad you thought it. Isn't that lovely? You know, this is the last time I'll see you like I'm back. Well, don't be gone away too long. You know how I love you. Me too, W, please. Is this Ed Lowry? Hello, Ed. Still listen. Harry's going to New York in the morning. Are you going to take me to their dance tomorrow night like you promised? <laughs> no, I won't give you a kiss unless you take me to the dance. <laughs> Right you are for once, Sour Milk. Get me the gong and tell the customers what time it is. Folks, when you hear the strike of the gong, it will be exactly, exactly 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Love of Mike, where's the gong? Hurry up. Well, hurry up, hurry up. Five seconds more, folks. Just five seconds, I then it will be... It. Well, hurry up, make a noise like one. Make a noise like one. Three seconds more, folks, oh. and it will be 11 o'clock, exactly. Two seconds, one second, and now you Believe it or not, folks, it's exactly 11 o'clock. Now, young man, this is the best room in the house. Seven dollars a week in advance. Seven dollars? Seven dollars per. Have you got anything cheaper? Nothing cheaper. Well, all right, I'll take it. Mm. There's five, six, seven. And remember, young man, I don't tolerate any of my rumors bringing girls in here. This is a respectable rooming house. But I don't know any girls. Oh, you'll get to know plenty before you're in New York very long. So mind what I say. Oh, madam. Yes. 
Uh, is there a telephone about? Oh, in the hall outside your door. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. I'm a poor lonely widow with a heart of gold. Van de Greer, 2100. Yes, this is the Liberty Broadcasting Station. No, no, we can't give out Miss LaSalle's address. No, positively not. But I got a song I wrote for her. Oh, it's a wonderful number. She'll be glad. Oh, you won't. I see. Yes, Harry King. Bellows Paul, Vermont. She don't know me, but... Oh. All right. I gotta get the song to her. It means everything to me. Sorry, big boy, but for the last time, there's no use. And you better not come around here again, either, for the manager says he's gonna throw you out. I said he'd throw you out. Oh, he can, eh? No, oh, I don't believe he can. Why, I licked Ed Laurie and Nosey Foster with one hand tied behind my back. What's that? Ten licks a couple of punks with all his hands and feet tied behind him. Who? Oh. oh, you know, the root boy from Vermont who's been trying to crash the gates with a song for Brenda. Oh, yeah, I know him. I've had a couple of talks with him. I feel sorry for him, too. He's having a tough time. It reminds me of the tough breaks I had when I come to this man's town. Go on. You never had no tough breaks. Why, everything was made too easy for you. Says you. Says I. Ah, skip the gutter. Oh. I understand. Your mother objects to your marrying me. No, not you, darling. Anybody. You see, my mother she had... She doesn't think I'm quite good enough for you. That's it, isn't it? Of course, I realize my ancestors didn't sound yours. Oh, darling, that's not it. She doesn't want me to marry anybody just now. The fact is, she's threatened to disinherit me if I do get married. You love me madly, don't you, boy? Oh, you know I do, darling. Well, how about you? I'm not so sure. You're joking. Not entirely. And I wish you wouldn't tell everyone we're going to be married until you consult my wishes in the matter. Well, we are going to be married, aren't we? We've been running around together for a year now. Yes, a year. During which time you supposed to me at least twice a week? Yes, because I love you. I can't get along without you. And from what you say, you can't get along without your mother's money. And that you evidently can't have both. I don't know what to do. My dear Ward, respect your mother's vision. Save your money and marry a society girl. Say, Brenda, you take me a cab, perhaps, but you wouldn't have me throw away a million dollars, would you? Certainly not. No woman could possibly be worse that much. Oh, now, Brenda, that's not the way to take it. Listen, boys, you've been very good to me. Given me a chance to become a successful singer. Given me a splendid contract and all that. And I'm really very fond of you. I have it. We'll get married on the quiet and we'll tell Mother anything about it. No, thanks. No secret marriages for me. Excuse me, Mr. Mustafa. It is thanks for you to go to the radio station. Oh, thank you, Marie. Please get my rest. Please. Come on, Ward. I want to do it. it's no use, big boy. 
here. You can't see her because she ain't come in yet. And you know what the boss told you the last time you was here? Well, you better beat it. Oh, I know what he said, but I'm going to see it. Well, you're going to get a punch in the nose if you're not careful. Oh, maybe not. Maybe yes. Oh, listen, let me see you when she comes in. You pretend you didn't see me. I can't do that. Oh, gee. What am I going to do now? Hello, Patsy. Good evening, Miss Michelle. I guess I'm on time for one. You've got ten minutes to spare, ain't you? Gee, she's more beautiful than a picture. Say, are you going nuts about her, too? Oh, she's beautiful. You said that before. I'm going to talk to you. Oh, no, you don't. No, I'm sorry. I, I won't take up any of the time. Well, where do you think you're going? I'm going and talk to Mr. Sal. Yeah? Well, I told you a hundred times to keep out of here. Now, get out and stay out. Oh, please don't be too rough with him, Mr. Jones. Oh, won't I? I forgot to tell you that he licked a couple of guys with everything tied behind him. I don't want to hurt you, Mr. Jones, but I don't like people shaking me. Now, wait a minute, Frank. I know you're the big boss around here, but this kid's a friend of mine. Now, let me talk to him. I can explain things. Okay, Al, but I warn you now, don't shake it. <laughs> That's a promise. Thanks, Mr. Jones. You're welcome. Now, don't pay any attention to him. He's always clowning that way. Suppose you and me go in a huddle up here. We'll talk this thing over. Talk to you and tell you something you don't know. Now, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Unimportant. I said I was going to talk to him alone. That's okay with me, baby. You do the talking and I'll do the listening. And how? Now, I know what you're up against. You won't get any place with Brenda the way you're going at it. I know, but I'm broke and I have to do something. Well, my advice is... Tune off. I'm doing the broadcasting. I like you, kid. I don't know whether your number's any good or not, but I want you to find out. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah? Well, uh, what's your racket anyway? I'm a music teacher, principally piano. Good. I am good. Yeah? Well, he's modest anyway. Where do you come from? Bellows Falls, Vermont. Bellow Falls? Vermont. Oh, sounds like a lot of cows. Oh, no, it's a big town. Railroad, the courthouse and everything. No! Yeah, I down you. Don't you know that every bird on Tin Pan Alley wants her to sing his song? Yeah, what chance have I got? I'll tell you what you can do. Brenda's giving a party tonight. What you want to do is get in your tuxedo, Move in on the party, make good yourself, then hand to your brainchild. But I haven't been invited to the party. No. And besides, I haven't got a tuxedo. Well, you can rent one for a few bucks. Right for once, dummy. Now, what do you say? You'll have a good time there. Nobody will pay any attention to you because there's always so many people there. And I'll take care of you. Now, it's your only chance. Will you do it or not? Sure. I have nothing to lose. That's the idea. Keep up the old bluff if you want to make good in the big city. Now, there's Brenda's card. Get out of here now, because I don't want her to see you. Thanks, Mr. Hine. Huh. And you too, Miss Patsy. That's okay, Mr. King. I don't know why you're doing this all for me. <laughs> That's all right, Hank. I had the same troubles myself when I first came to the city. <laughs> I'll see you at the party. Say, big-hearted, that poor goof is going to be led to the slaughter by you yet. He's gonna get in a jam, sure. The poor kid needs a break. If he knows his onions, he'll make good, too. He'll be an onion, all right. But why, Will Al, you are you... stop asking questions? Do I look like I took the Edison test? Now, out of the way, my public is waiting. But, Al, don't you... Mary, you come in here this instant. You're going to stay out there all night? I'm coming, Mother. I am. Go on, sweetheart. You're in case. You go on about your business, Ed Lowry. Oh, Mother, I wish you wouldn't treat me as if I were a child. I don't want you to get out of here about all hours of the night, but that's good for nothing, Ed Lowry. 
You're an engaged girl, and I want you to act like one. Well, Harry's away in New York trying to make a fortune. I suppose you want me to stay at home, twiddling my thumbs until he returns. Yes, I do. You're going to marry Harry King. Why, his father was one of the most respected men in this community, and that's more than your father was. You married him. Don't you be so sassy, young lady. You go on upstairs and answer those last two letters that Harry wrote to her. I'll take you to task. Applesauce, mother, and baloney. Baloney. I'll do anything you say. Listen, boy, yeah, you are usually a most likable man, and you have some very good traits. Thank you. And you have some deceptively bad ones, but I like you very much. And I might marry you sometime yeah. if you weren't afraid of your mother. Mother needn't know anything about it. <laughs> no secret marriages for me, remember that. Oh, friend, don't you mind? Right. You two love our channel, Mr. Billy and Swing. You're the most you know. How about a dime? I'd love it. Excuse me, boys. And excuse me, boys. Nice floor, isn't it, Al? Yeah, why don't you use it? Why you should be tired. You've been using my feet all night. Well, Marjorie King. Oh, no, oh, oh, Hello, Bill. Glad to see you. Oh, you folks are a little late. Oh. Want to do a number for us? Sure. If Brenda wants me to. Well, oh, you know she wants you to do one. I'll go right over to Nan's place if he's got anything I know. Yeah, you go tell him to play for you. Bill, you'll find the crock in the kitchen under the sink. Listen, big boy, you're broadcasting over my frequency this evening, so don't go beyond your wavelength. All right, Daddy. I'm having one horrible, beautiful evening. Come along with You're looking wonderful. I don't feel that way. Uh -huh. I'm off to bed to see you, Mr. Pine. I was getting cold feet. Oh, that's all right, Vermont. We'll tune you in on the right station. Don't you worry, kid. I'm going to take you over to Brenda right now. And no matter what I say about you, it's okay. You understand? Put yourself over me and then song. Come on, let's go. Out of the way, small change. Oh, all right, smart. Are you doing it, Well, oh, Brenda. Brenda. I want you to meet one of your admirers, Mr. Harry King from Vermont. Came all the way from Vermont just to meet you. Did you really do that, Mr. King? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm awful glad to know you. I'm very happy to know you. It was sweet of you to come. Thank you. And believe it or not, his forefathers came over on the well-known Mayflower. They bought up the whole state of Vermont, and he made his millions from maple syrup. Really? 
Ain't that right, Harry? Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, certainly. Mr. James, may I present Mr. King? Glad to know you, Mr. King. Thank you. Come, let me introduce you to some of my other guests. <laughs> Say, Al, do you lie to be smart, or were you born that way? Nature's gift to little Al. Hello. Marjorie Kane is getting ready to do a number. That means more work for your Uncle Al. All ready, babe? All set. All right. Wait a minute, folks. Everybody, please. Just a second. Now listen closely. For the next two minutes, you're going to be entertained free of charge by little Miss Marjorie Kane. You're going to sing a brand new number, My Big Boy. Okay, let's go. <laughs>
Mr. Sal, this has been the most wonderful evening of my life. Has it? You know, you're beautiful. <laughs> now you're just flattering me. No, ma'am. I really mean it. Honest, I do, Miss LaSalle. You're very sweet. Why not call me Brenda? All my friends, too. May I? Surely. Now you've talked about me all evening. Tell me something about yourself. How your family made its fortune in the maple sugar industry, for instance. Well, you see... Of course, I know it comes from trees. Yes, it comes from trees. They bore a little hole in the tree, and then they, uh... Then they drive a little wooden trough into the hole. Yes, I know that. That's right. And that's where the sap comes from. Yes, that's where the sap comes from. Yes, that's where the sap comes from. Hey, you startled me. <laughs> Mr. King and I were deeply interested in discussing... Discussing sap, yes. Not I heard that. Not sap, George. Sap. Maple sugar sap. Understand? Oh, yes. Maple sugar sap. From Vermont. Yes. That's where the sap comes from. Boy. Mr. Hampton, I may be slow to understand, but when I do, I understand awfully well. What are you trying to do, Mr. King? Act the wounded hero's part? No, Mr. Hampton, but I don't like your tone. Gentlemen, I do hope I'm not using the wrong word. I'm sorry if I forgot myself. I apologize. Granted. And you were? Oh, of course I apologize. It's just as well you interfered uh, for Mr. King's sake. Your apology is also accepted. I'm glad you are so solicitous about Mr. King. Mm. Well, I must be trotting along now, Brenda. I'm not uh, used to these late hours. I wanted to thank you for a most charming evening. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Please do call me. I'm sure you have plenty to say privately. Yes, I have. Privately. Good night, darling. Oh, uh, Mr. King. I'll leave you here to entertain Miss LaSalle. Thanks. She's very, very easily amused. <laughs> yes, you've amused me quite often, Ward. Good night. Good night. I'm sorry if I was a little touchy. I shouldn't have gotten sore just because he called me a sap. Certainly not. Maple sap is very sweet. Well, I guess I'll be running along, Miss Lee. I mean, a Brenda. I want to thank you for a lovely evening. Don't try. It was charming of you to come. May I call again? I'd be delighted. Please you call me. I will. Good night. Good night. this minute and pack your bag and go down to New York and see Harry. Well, I won't do it, Mother. I'm sick of him anyway. Yes, you will do it. You're going to marry Harry King. And if this LaSalle woman is trying to grab him off, then you have to go and take him away from her because he belongs to you. I knew this would happen when you didn't answer those last two letters he wrote you. Oh, applesauce, Mother. What? Well, what? What? I'll do it right away. You better do it. Sorry to bring you to a cheap place like this, Brenda. All the good we're going to close this time in the morning. It's perfectly all right, Warren. All I want is a cup of coffee. Hello? I guess coffee for two is all we want, boy. Yes, Senator. <laughs> That's fresh, fellow. I think he resented you calling him a boy. <laughs> Here's our coffee now. 
Any more impertinence from you, young man, I'll report you to the manager. I'm the manager. <laughs> You'll get no redress there, Ward. <laughs> yes, you're right. Of course I'm right. Maybe he really mistook you for some senator. <laughs> See here, Brenda, when are you going to stop running around with this mott person? I can't see what you see in him unless it's because he's so ridiculously wealthy. Don't people ever quit eating? If they did, buddy, you and me had quit eating too. You know, Ward, I really like Harry very much. His simplicity, his earnestness. His money. <laughs> Why, he's nothing but a rude. Nothing to recommend him but a bit of maple sugar. At least very modest about it. Why, he's never even mentioned his money. <laughs> In fact, he seems to avoid the subject. Listen, Brenda. You've admitted that you, you like me as well as any man. No, I think so. Fine, you admitted that. But you constantly refuse to marry me because... Because of your mother's objection. Good. Now, I've had three or four talks with mother this last week. And she softened me. Now, here's a proposition. No secret marriage, is No, no secret marriage. This is just, just a quiet one with you friends. Tomorrow night after the show. No. And how about your... My mother? I'll take you to her immediately after we marriage. And I know she'll love you as soon as she sees you. Do you think so? I know so. What do you think? You've been a persistent student, Lord. And I believe you really love me. And I'll do it. Brenda, darling. Providing nothing happens to make me change my mind. It's only 24 hours. <laughs> All right, boy. It's a bargain. I have something here for you. I've been carrying it around for months. Oh. You like it? Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Not here, dear. Somebody might be watching. Well, you want to trot along now? Yes, I think I will. I'm tired. Fine. You're not going to see this thing right anymore, are you? I hate to hurt him. He's been so sweet. But all right, I'll do his say. Thank you. Good night, Senator. This means everything to me. I've fallen in love with him. You love Brenda. Well, why tell me about it? Tell it to her. Is she thinking I'm a millionaire? Instead of a dishwashing songwriter? Tell her the truth. Brenda's real. Regular. Well, it was my fault you broke in on the party. Tell her you only wanted her just to, you know, warble your number. Funny thing, I never even mentioned my number. Well, tell her all about it and all the luck in the world to you. I guess you're right. I might as well tell her the truth. It's going to be pretty tough, though. You're a great pal, Al, and I'll never forget it. My Boy Scout training, that's all. Come out of it. When you hit the bottom, no place to go but up. I guess that is everything now, Marie. Yes, I think so, Mr. I'll telegraph you where to send the trunk. As soon as I know where Mr. Harris and I will be, we will be. And I wish Mr. Marcel very much happy. Marie, you've been with me a long time, ever since you were a child. And you know me better than anyone, with the possible exception of Mr. Pine. Yes, I know Mr. Marcel's past struggle for success, how you have helped others. I know how few you can trust, and my heart goes out to you. I wonder if I will be happy. I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. 
to me, Mademoiselle, that you are not sure about you and Monsieur Hampton? Yes. I've always fancied that I cared for him. But last night, after I promised to marry him, I began to worry, to wonder. I couldn't sleep. Yes, I see. This young Monsieur King. He's very fine. Very charmant. <laughs> he is so refreshing, so different, so filled with an appreciation of life. Oh, do you think I'm falling in love with him, Marie? Oh, Mademoiselle should know what is in her own heart. I beg pardon, Miss Marcel. Mr. King is calling. Show Mr. King in, Harry. Oh, now Mademoiselle has the opportunity to find out. Hello, Harry. Hello, Brenda. My, you're looking fine today. This is a surprise, but I'm glad you came. I have something to tell you. You going away? Well, I, I just thought I might go on a little vacation. Oh, I hope you won't be gone long because, well, just because. Come, let's sit down and you can tell me all about it. Look, I brought you something. Maple sugar. Oh, thank you, Harry. Now, what is it you want to tell me? Brenda, you've been my dream girl. But there was a little girl back in my hometown and I thought I cared for her until I met you. And then... Harry, I... I didn't know this would happen. I haven't been playing fair with you. No, I haven't been playing fair with you. I'm not a millionaire, as you've been thinking. I'm just a poor songwriter trying to get you to sing one of my numbers. Look. And that was the only way I could get to you. Then that first night you were so nice to me. And then let me see you after. Well, I, I fell in love with you. But Harry, why I suppose now that you know the truth, you won't have anything to do with me. I'm glad you told me the truth. You see, I loved you so much that, well, I almost was fool enough to ask you to marry me. Me without a penny in the world. Will you forgive me? Oh, I know you're awfully mad at me, aren't you? No. Oh. oh. I don't think you'll find him in there, young woman. I don't recollect him going out, though. Well, I've just got to find him. Quick, it's important. Hmm. And uh, what do you want to see him about? I don't discuss my business with strangers. Can you tell me where he might be? Oh, I might, if you had better manners. I'll go around to the Liberty radio station. He's generally hanging around there, I guess. Thanks. Oh, don't mention it, I'm sure. Oh. We only expect to be gone on our honeymoon in a few weeks. Meanwhile, Jones, I'll leave everything in your hands. Very well, Mr. Hampton. Hello. Oh, yes, Miss LaSalle, how are you? Tonight, you are going to sing, Oh, How I Love You, a new number by Harry King. All right, I'll give that information to Al. Goodbye. You can forget that. Miss LaSalle is not going to sing any song by Mr. Harry King over my station. But, Mr. Hampton, you know Miss LaSalle has the sole right to choose her own songs. It's in a contract. I don't care about a contract. Oh, never mind, Mr. Jones. I'll, uh, I'll see Miss LaSalle about it personally. Go on, take care of that other thing, will you please? All right, I'll go over to the cash in. I beg your pardon, mister, but can you tell me where I can find a boy the name of Harry King? Well, who are you? I'm his fiance from Bellows Falls. I'd like to get in touch with him right away. Oh, so you're engaged to him, are you? Well, that's news. What's news? When I find him, I'm going to give him some news. Hmm, you're not angry with him, are you? Am I? Say, do you know what? He's been down here pretending he was a millionaire, 
and running around with that LaSalle woman. Why, he's got a nerve. He's just a poor country boy, crazy about writing songs. <laughs> well, if he's that sort of a chap, you don't want to marry him, do you? Well, I would if I thought he was going to make any money. Oh, I see. You're quite a businesswoman, aren't you? I'd be a fool to let some other woman get him, just when he's making good, wouldn't I? Mm, certainly you would. Well, you're such a nice little girl, I, I'd like to help you. Oh, would you? You know, I love him so much, it's breaking my heart. Yes, I can see that. Come here and sit down and tell me all about it now. Well, you see, we've been engaged for about a year. Gee, it's wonderful of you to arrange to sing my number tonight. You know, all my dreams are coming true. They deserve to come true. You have talent. Why, your song is beautiful. If my song is over tonight, and I make a lot of money, will you, uh, marry me? Will you? Don't ask me to give you my answer now, Harry. There is something I have to clear up first. Gee, sweetheart. Yes? Well, I'll breathe a whole lot better when you do. Gee, it's great to call you sweetheart. You're sweet, too. Now run along and let me get my dress so that I may sing your song properly now. And stop by for me. We'll go to the radio station together. Well, I have some business to attend to. But uh, I think I can get off. Oh, that's fine. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mrs. Salem, she's on the balcony. Hi. Brenda. Hello, boy. I'm glad you came. I have something to tell you. Yes, and I have something to say to you. What do you mean, planning to sing a song by this fellow King over the station tonight? Why, I won't have it. Oh, no? No, and I've instructed Jones not to put it on your program. You're not going to do any favors with that miserable little puppy. What a contemptible thing to do. You seem to forget that my contract specifies that mm. I may sing any song I choose. And please don't slander Harry King. I'll say anything I like about him. Do you know who he really is? Why, he's nothing but a Vermont farmhand down here posing as a gentleman just to get you to sing his song. I'm quite aware of Harry's affection. He told me all about it himself. Hmm. And you're still going to sing his song, eh? Certainly. Well, you certainly are a fool to let him bamboozle you the way he has. And believe me, tonight, after we're married, you'll never see him again. Oh, yes. That's just what I want to see you about. I'm not going to marry you tonight or any other time, Lord. What? I mean it. I found out only today that I never could love you. And the contemptible little gesture you have just made in regard to Harry's song justifies my true feelings about you. Well, you just promised to marry me last night. Providing, remember? Providing that in the meantime, nothing happened to make me change my mind. Well? That thing has happened. So you're going to throw me down for that miserable little tramp, eh? That's mm. exactly what I'm doing. Harry is fine and clean. He's not like you, thank heaven. I care for you yet. But you were afraid of your society, then. You humiliated me time and time again. Then Harry came along, and I stooped low enough to use him to arouse your jealousy. And in doing so, I learned to love him. I didn't know it until this afternoon, but I know it now. So you and I are true, Ward. Oh, you're just angry now, Brenda. I don't mind if you sing a song. I said I was true, Ward Hampton, and I meant it. Here's your ring. Now, please go. Well, you'll regret this, Brenda. I won't renew your contract, and I'll blacklist you at every broadcasting station in the country. <laughs> that is quite likely, but I'm not afraid. Now get out. Very well. Goodbye. Brenda. 
Jones says that Hampton won't ever sing Harry's song tonight. I don't like the looks of things. I'm going to find out about it. Go ahead and put your foot into it, smart guy. You started all the trouble around here in the first place with your bright ideas. Well, I'm just so bright that you'd marry me if you could. You bet I will win. See, what did I tell you? And as far as I'm concerned, baby, you're still in circulation. So, so long. She's in the hall, Mr. Sound. She said her name is Mary Wood and wanted to speak to you about Mr. King. Oh, very well, Tuttle. You may show her in. Mm -hmm. Everything. What do you mean? What have you told her? All about us. But there's nothing to tell. I wrote to her and told her I didn't love her, but I loved you. You're lying, Harry King. Mary. It's no use, Harry. I can't stand it between you and Miss Wood. She's the one for you to consider. But there's nothing wrong. I won't give you up. Listen to me, Harry King. Take this girl and leave before I tell you something you won't like to hear. Brenda, I love you and I know you love me. That's just where you're wrong. I don't love you. I never did. I simply used you to make poor Hampton jealous, and you've helped me. Thanks very much. Mr. Hampton and I are going to marry tonight. Understand? Tonight. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. Please. You will believe it if you stay around here long enough. Oh, how do you think I could love a simple-minded country yokel like you when I have a world of real men to choose from? And you without a dollar. Go back where you came from and stay there. That's where you belong. Come on, let's go home, Mary. What do you say, Harry, dear? Looking for Brenda. In the living room. Okay, you got I just met Harry and another girl outside. Anything wrong? Oh, Al. I've lost him. Who, Hampton or Harry? Harry. And he meant so much to me. Oh, now, come on. Tell Uncle Al all about it. You used to tell me your troubles back in the old hometown. Come on, do it again. Well, it all started the night of the party. Mm-hmm. When I met him, and then I sent him away with her. I thought it was the best thing to do. I know how she must have felt if she loved him as I do. I'll bet she's a country gold digger. She's lying. He never told me anything about another girl. And he's one honest kid, too. 
I felt so too. Well, if you loved him, why'd you send him away? Come on, let's get him before he leaves no, town. No, I don't. I know, but if you love him, let's hurry. I'd rather not. Well, Harry or no Harry, you've got to get to the studio and you've got to hurry. You're right, Al. And I'm going to sing Harry's song. That's the baby. Come on, now, get your bonnet on. Hurry up now. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Young man, what did I tell you about bringing young hussies into this room? I'm not a hussy. So you say. That's all right, Miss Tibbs. I'm leaving tonight. Tonight? Yes, right away. Well, I'll be sorry to lose you, Mr. King. You've been a good rumor. Thanks, Miss Tibbs. But I'll be glad to leave New York now. Well, I'll go down and get those shirts that I laundered for you and bring them right up to you. All right. Take it easy, Brenda. I'll wait inside, Al. Listen, stupid, here's your one chance in your life to make good. You've always wanted to announce Brenda. I'm going to let you announce her tonight. There's a fight going on between her and Harry, and if I find him, I can fix things up. Okay, Cupid, but what do I get for doing the announcement? If you do a good job, maybe I'll marry you. You will? Papa, come to Mama. I said maybe. You certainly got a lot of smoke clothes since you've been down here. I bet Ed Lowry will be sore when he sees you all togged out. Oh, rats. What's the matter? Jealous of Ed? Hmm. Good evening, all. This is Patsy Green, America's girlfriend announcing. No, folks, don't go away. I'm not going to sing, and you ought to be glad, too. Our next number on the program is going to be our lovely sweetheart of the year, Miss Brenda LaSalle singing a wonderful new song written by a clever young chap named Harry King. The song is entitled, Oh, How I Love You. Unbutton your ears, folks. It's gonna be hot. Let's go. Get out of here. I don't want to hear it. without stop goodbye, would you? I'm sorry, Albert. I know all about that. But boy, Brenda loves you. She loves you. She just told you about Hampton on account of what this dame told her. What did you tell her? Well, I didn't say anything except that I wanted you to marry me. Oh, yeah? That ain't all she told her. Come here. She did, did she? She did. So that's your little game, huh? Oh, Harry, I love you. I didn't want to lose you. 
That's why I said what I did. And Mr. Hanson told me to. Oh, so that doodlebug was in on it, too, huh? That's enough. Get in there. Where to, mister? Any town in Vermont. Oh, okay. oh well, I'd rather marry Ed Lowry anyway. I hope your goldfishes have fleas. What a tough break poor Ed Lowry's gonna get the rest of his life. And he's a nice boy, too. Come on, we gotta go to the studio. Folks, you have just heard Miss Brenda LaSalle saying, Oh, how I love you. Written by Mr. Harry King. Now, we've had so many requests over the telephone tonight for her to do this number again, that she's kindly consented to sing it once more and dedicate it to the author, Mr. Harry King, who is here himself in the studio tonight. Okay, let's go. Come on, folks, hurry up, hurry up. They're waiting for you. It's you. Come on. It's just an unavoidable little delay, folks, that's all. You know how these dedication ceremonies are. Here we are. 